All right, now we will continue to follow the latest from the Middle East, but we do want to head to the spin room as we await this VP debate with our Caitlin Huey Burns and Ed O'Keefe. You guys have some company with you at the table. We do, Lindsay. We're joined now by our political director, Finn Gomez, uh, who not only spends time with us here on CBS News 24-7, but has been one of the uh, organizers, frankly, of this debate, right? Helping put it together in recent weeks. Um, Many sleepless nights, Ed. I imagine there have been, and uh, you're on the verge of another big night here. Congratulations. Uh, remind us, first of all, uh, when people tune in later tonight, what is the sort of general format? What should we expect once this thing gets started at 9 p.m. Eastern? Look, it's uh, nine, 90 minutes, as you know, two commercial breaks, four minutes apiece. Uh, candidates are not allowed to bring any notes. There's no interactions with their campaign and staff, right? Um, there is a format that, that we discussed where the questions are two, two, and one, essentially. Two minutes for a candidate to respond, two minutes for the opposing candidate to rebut or have the rebuttal against that first the first candidate, and then one minute each for rebuttals there. Look, this is this is this is gonna be a debate that's gonna be focused on on policy, uh, on context, uh, on things that we think matter the most to our audience, to American viewers, to potential American, you know, to, vo to voters, right? So I think, uh, I think we're, we're in for a, a, a real uh, traditional strong debate. And Finn, you've been not only covering this race, but you've covered lots of debates over the years. Right. Um, how does this one stand out to you? Because we've been talking all day about how much debates matter. And Ed brought up a really good point, which is, well, in June, it really was very consequential, forced Joe Biden out of the race. But for a vice presidential debate, for this kind of stage in the game, where lots of states are already voting, I mean, that's significant 20, here. 20, 20 states yeah, already voting. 20, yeah. You know, does is the intention from the campaigns to change the trajectory of this race, or is it to kind of get through, get the message across? Kind of, where do you sense things? Well, there's a couple things, and I think the three of us combined have actually have maybe covered like just uh, we've covered a lot covered of a lot. debates, right? It's, you know, and I think that for this one though. I mean, just to, to get like a, 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 an assessment between the three of us, um, have, do you remember another VP debate that had this much interest? Uh, to me, I was thinking about this earlier, I'd have to go back to 2008, my first cycle that I covered, mm. or where it was, it was Sarah Palin and Joe Biden. Mm. Yeah. I think with, yeah. to that level. And the, the other thing to remember about this one is that this is, this is could be the, not only is it the last, the, for one and the first and only of this cycle of vice presidential debates, but it could be the last debate Period. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before the never. That's not normally up. how it goes. It does. It is right. not. You don't end with the VP debate. Right. Real quick, uh, I've seen some chatter about this and been asked by friends and and yeah. people we've met along the way. We're here at the CBS Broadcast Center in New York. Yes. This is a studio that is normally used by uh, last week tonight with John Oliver because this is a massive studio space in New York, one of yeah. the few that houses Historic. television yeah. programs yeah. Uh, in Central and Midtown Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Why is the debate being held in New York? Was that something the campaigns wanted? Is that something the networks have pushed for? And give us some sense of sort of what it took to put this production together over the last several weeks. Look, there, you know, there has, you know, we, there's, you've seen it throughout the cycle. There's been some back and forth about where debates will be held, mostly in either um, in, in battleground states, right, or, or key primary states, right, like New Hampshire, uh, Iowa, whatever. Uh, I think. This site and this location in itself is of value for various reasons. I think one of some of the ones you just discussed, it's historic. You know, it is, it is our space. Uh, this is a, um, uh, we have, it, it's, it's it, unlike many other, other debate setups, the studio is right next door, yeah. mm. right? So you, yeah. everything is right here. Like yeah. the spin rooms, uh, I think the last debate, the spin room was like six blocks away. Mm -hmm. right. The spin room is uh, art. The studio is right next door. So to have that sort of immediacy and significance of the moment, this historic moment, right here at CBS, in our, in, in our story uh, broadcast center, I can think of no other better place. Frankly. I mean, good thing we have all the soundproofing in these studios, right? So we're not interfering, yeah, that's right. uh, that's right. <laughs> interfering there. Um, but, you know, what's, what's fascinating to me about this is, is that point, is that this could be the VP candidates having the last word. And I'm wondering if yes. Donald Trump wants to have his VP candidate have the last word. Well, we, we, do, we do know that he's, he is planning on having a press conference a little, little later on today, mm -hmm. right, which is unusual for a... For the for the for the, the the person on top of the ticket to have to try to step on the VPs uh, the running mates day if you will, um, 
Look, I, I think there, to your earlier question, I think there are a couple of reasons why these debates matter, especially. I think one is you're trying to amplify and motivate your base, right? But a lot of this, the dial doesn't move that much when it comes to the BP debates, right? But it reinforces what, like, your supporters at home believe in. It's something to encourage, something to be motivated by, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at also our latest data, if you look at the, 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 the data that from our great team here at CBS News led by Anthony Salvanto, it shows that uh, for you could, there is, there is you know, we, we haven't talked a lot about undecideds this, this cycle. Mm -hmm. There are some undecideds. It's more about persuadable voters, mm -hmm. right? And right now, there's probably hovers, it's less than 10%, somewhere around between 5 and 10%. That amount, right, and some of those are like either moderate Republicans or whatever else, but th that is enough. That, that th yeah. We talked a lot, Ed, in, yeah. in, in, in CHP about like the battle of margins. Mm -hmm. In those seven battleground states, like that can be, that can make the difference. So yeah. even a little bit counts. And so they will be tuning in tonight at some point uh, and could potentially be swayed uh, in those seven states. Potentially, across yeah. The country. yeah. Right. Finn Gomez, our political director, who's been hard at work putting tonight together along with the great CBS News team. Thanks to you. We'll uh, talk later. Good luck. Lindsay, back over to you. Appreciate it, guys. Let's bring in CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes. So, Nancy, what are Walls and Vance's winning strategies for tonight? Well, the Vance team, interestingly, has been a lot more forthcoming. The Trump campaign has kind of laid out what he wants to do tonight. They say he wants to go after uh, Tim Walls on immigration. And they say he wants to go after him on his 24-year military record. They just kind of put it out there. So I think we know, uh, you know, what to expect from him, at least when it comes to those issues. The Waltz team has been a lot quieter. They're kind of a little more walled off. And so, uh, you know, we know what he's like as a debater because he has been debating for 20 years as governor, uh, before that six terms in Congress. Um, but as far as what he wants to achieve tonight specifically, they really haven't said. So in terms, you, you cover walls very closely. In terms of how much of the Midwestern folksy guy are we going to see or yeah. how much of an attack dog are, are we going to see? And what has some of his prep been like? I think you're going to see a, a lot of folksy Tim Walls. First of all, because the campaign knows that has, is what has endeared him to Democrats in particular, according to our polling. Uh, there are... A lot more Democrats who are excited about their pick than Republicans who are excited about theirs. So I don't think you're going to see um, some major departure from the persona that we've seen publicly. Um, I think you'll hear a lot about the Midwest, A, because he's from there, but B, because you've got a, a pair of very important battleground states in the Midwest, Michigan and Wisconsin. In fact, he has been doing his debate prep in Michigan with a Michigander. Pete Buttigieg, who is the transportation secretary, who's from uh, Indiana originally, but has now moved with his family to Michigan. He's there a lot of weekends. He's been playing the role of J.D. Vance um, uh, in these one-on-one -on -one mock debates with uh, Tim Waltz, trying to get under his skin, trying to rattle him, and trying to train him to stay on message and not get too worked up. Uh, and, and not get knocked off course hmm. if uh, Vance says things about him that he doesn't like or that he doesn't think are true. Fascinating. Appreciate reporting. I love getting into the weeds and all that. You Vance got Cordes, it. Thank you.